cable distribution. So when we're talking about cable distribution, we're talking about our method of running our cables through our buildings to ensure that we have a hierarchical nature and organized cable distribution system. The components entail our entrance facilities. Our entrance facilities is where the cable enters your building from your telecommunications service provider. That can be Comcast or, or Verizon or any of the other telecom providers. And where it comes into your building is usually going to be your main distribution frame, which will be your telecom closet on usually on your main floor where the service comes in and is then switched to all of the other intermediary frames, such as the second floor here. You'll do that through a cross connect, which is a cable that goes from the main distribution to the intermediate distribution frame. We also have our backbone wiring, which is the wiring that goes between two switches or two routers inside your building, forming the backbone of your network. Your telecommunication closets are the areas where your telecommunications gear is stored, your routers, your switches, and your patch panels. You also have your horizontal uh, wiring, which goes from the intermediate distribution frame on each floor into the office spaces, where the work area is going to be done. Inside of our intermediate distribution frames, we have punch-down blocks. There are two main types that you're going to find in your distribution frames, the 66 and the 110. The 66 is solely used for voice at this point, and used to be used for old LAN wiring as well, with CAT3 networks. It has a very close proximity of each cable to each other, causing more crosstalk, uh, and therefore is a bad choice for any high-speed LAN wiring. The 110 blocks, on the other hand, are used for high-speed LANs. These 110 blocks are used for CAT5 and above networks and provide more spacing in between each cable, leading to less interference from crosstalk. Patch panels are also found in the IDFs and MDFs. They allow numbers of network jacks to connect wiring from the jack in the wall to the network switch in a convenient and flexible manner. So if you look at the patch panel on the, in the picture, the front has RJ45 jacks that can then be patched into a switch plate. The back has punch downs similar to the 66 and 110 blocks that can be punched down from there going running back into the switch outlet inside the work environment. This gives us a very flexible way of being able to rewire buildings without having to change the wires going to each room. We can simply use the front patch panel to change the wiring from one to the other and patch through the circuits. Here's an example of what a cable distribution would look like. We would start with looking at our work area. We would have our PC connected with a patch cable, a straight through, going to a wall jack, RJ45. The back side of that would look like a patch panel. It's a punch down block that works for that singular jack, runs the cable through the wall and into a punch down block. That punch down block then is punched down into the patch panel, and from the front of the patch panel again has an RJ45 that can go into the RJ45 port of a switch, providing us the ability to change on the fly as needed by using that patch panel. Wireless technology. As we keep increasing the amount of wireless, some people believe that wired networks are no longer relevant, but that's not true, because our wireless clients, even though they gain access to our network by using radio waves, using the access point, whether it's wireless access point or an access point, WAP or AP, it still is physically connected to our network switch as shown in the diagram to the left. All our wireless devices are connecting to the same access point, which acts as a hub, and therefore is considered to be on the same shared network segment, just like a hub from a bandwidth and security perspective. And that is cable distribution.